Welcome to my workshop. You are watching Casual DIY channel and in today's video we're going to be checking out this laser engraver and cutting machine from Longer B1 with 20 watt module. So in today's video I'm going to take you through step by step process of putting this bad boy together. We're going to do some engraving and cutting tests and after that we'll take it through its paces and see how it performs when cutting and engraving different types of materials and what kind of quality we can actually expect. So let's have a look what's inside of this box. Right then, that's what you get in the box. You've got the main body here, uh, the laser module is absolutely huge but that's 20 watts of power. Now my package also comes with the air pump which is super important if you want to use this laser for cutting as it will give you far better results and as you can see the module itself is designed um, to take the hose itself so that's super important if you've got option and if you've got the money make sure to take the air pump it's definitely super worth it. Right then for the first step we're going to need the x-axis and the sides of the machine okay the two aluminium profiles there. Now the left hand side actually has got the wires sticking out through in the middle and at the back of it as well. At the back of this profile you've got a notch cut out just over here it's for the wire to go through so it's out of the way. So what we need to do is to put the sides through the rollers of the x-axis. So now we just feed the sides through them just like that. Now it's time to install the front and the back of the machine and basically the sides just slide into the slots in the aluminium profiles just like that. Really simple and easy to do. To connect the whole frame together we're going to need the screws from step two and just start them off and before you actually tighten them on make sure that the whole frame is nice and square so use a speed square just to make sure everything is in order. Right then, now it's time to install the timing belts. In the rear frame you've got this cogged wheel through which we need to take the timing belt. Then on the x-axis we've got a place here where the metal plate on the timing belt will go just through here to lock it in place. And on the other side uh, where the module is the front of the machine the timing belt will go over this um, wheel here. Now the hardest part of this is to take um, the timing belt over the cogged wheel and uh, just use an allen key to try to fish it out from down there. One end of the timing belt needs to go underneath the x-axis just over here, pull it through and to the wheel on the other side, fish it out and uh, you can connect it to our x-axis. However at this point I'm just going to connect one end and I'm going to leave the other one unattached until I get the same setup on the other side. However I recommend to take actually the plastic cover off and it's much easier to put the timing belt on. Right, now to make sure the x-axis is actually traveling straight, okay, so it's not uh, slightly bent to the left or to the right, uh, that's what the timing belts are here for as well. So what we need to do, the x-axis, remove it right to the end, press it against the back, and now we can put the timing belt. Thanks to that, we'll make sure the frame is nice and square. Now as the machine is upside down, we need to check the tensions of the timing belts on the x-axis, on the y-axis, okay, on the both sides that we just did. This one is definitely way too loose. Now the adjustment system is absolutely that simple. It's on the other side at the front of the machine, okay, and what you need, you just need an allen key, and depending on which side you will turn the key, it will either tighten uh, the belt or release it a little bit so you add less tension. Now another thing you may want to try to adjust at this stage is if you've got some play in the x-axis, i.e. if it's moving left to right, then what you do on both ends here, you've got the wheels that are making sure uh, that the x-axis is traveling along the aluminium profile and basically what you can do with a key, you can basically adjust the position of these wheels. So for example, for me, this one is free spinning now and I don't want that, so I'm going to rotate the bolt until it's in a nice and stable position. Same thing in the middle here uh, where you've got your laser head. Again, check the wheels if they're not, they're not too hard 
or maybe two slack and with the key just amend the position of them. Right then, now it's time to install the laser head itself. For that, you're just gonna need this small bolt uh, to make sure it stays in place. So just slide the laser module onto the carriage and secure it with this bolt. One of the things I really like about the frame of this uh, machine are the feet. They're quite large, they're quite thick, uh, they give you a lot of stability and you've got this plastic padding underneath to make sure it, the laser will not slide easily on your workbench. However, they also got a really nice feature. You can actually unscrew the bottoms to adjust and level the whole machine out. For example, if your workbench is not even. Very handy feature there. All right then, now it's time to install these limit switches, okay? They're both clearly marked. This is on Y axis, so just over here. This one is on X axis, so it will be just over here. You've got two sets of holes. We are going for the one that's closer uh, to the module, okay? And just bolt it on. That needs to be facing downwards. And now the x-axis limit switch. Now it's time to wire everything up. First of all, the terminal here and the limit switch. Everything's clearly marked by the white band. So y-axis, y-axis, we're in the right place. And then the terminal just over here. Then in the middle of the frame, we've got a massive cable sticking out. And again, everything's clearly marked up, okay? So X with the um, stop here. This is for the motor itself. That's just at the front here. And the last, the main uh, wire for the laser module. On top of the frame over here, you've got some uh, Velcros, okay, so the uh, bolted onto the frame itself so you can do some cable management, but also you get some cable ties as well. On the um, module just over here, you've got a nice notch here for the cable itself, so it's uh, nice and stable and it's out of the way. Now, as I'm already um, at the laser head just over here, what I want to do is install the hose for the air pump, for the air support here. Again, the laser module is fully uh, designed to take this, so you've got this nice holder here, really well designed, really well thought through. I do like that. Spot on, and what I can do, I can straight away do a little bit of cable management. Well, you can do your cable management to your liking, making sure is exactly as you wanted. And the last wire to connect is just this one here. So for that, we need to flip it over and you've got the motor just over here. So you can plug it in. Now the very last few things we've got to install is the air pump itself, okay? Super simple to do. At the front, you've got this nozzle here and the tubing goes just directly onto it. Um, I do actually like that it comes with a valve over here so you can limit the amount of air going from uh, the air pump to the machine itself. However, you can also control this in software via light burn for the air pump to be on or off depending on the projects you're doing. So if you're cutting, definitely have it on. If you're engraving, have it off. And I also do like the fact that there's no additional uh, cabling for this. This directly plugs into your uh, laser engraver, so there's no additional uh, power source, which is very, very good. I do like that. So we need to install it like here. And then you've got a few more cables. That's the USB cable for your computer. That goes on top here. Power brick to power everything up on the top here. On the front panel over here, you've got the port for the SD card uh, where you can put your designs through. On top of that, you're gonna need some sets of keys for this machine. Uh, so it gives you a little bit more privacy if you're sharing your workshop, you know, you can turn off the machine by taking the key away and it's not gonna work. Uh, so that's quite a nice and handy feature. 
on off switch reset button and your alarm management here but we'll get to that in just a few moments also at the front you've got the emergency stop button um, as standard as you get it it's actually plugged in so you need to make sure to undo it otherwise your machine will not work and that's it the whole machine is assembled so as you can see it's actually fairly simple to put everything together nothing to it it will take about 20 minutes tops to actually put everything together plus set up everything as well the tension cables and everything else but the most important question is how does it perform and for that I'm going to move it to my other workbench, plug it into my computer and we'll run some tests. First of all, we're going to be doing the cutting test and um, the plywood sheet I've got is four millimeters in thickness. After that, we'll do the engraving test. However, I've got a very strong feeling that this module, the 20 watt module is actually powerful enough to do a cutting test on a little bit more thicker material and for that I've got a six millimeter plywood sheet that will do the cutting test as well. After that plenty more to come. So let's start this bad boy up and see how it performs. Before we actually turn on the laser we need to set up the focal point and for that you've got a built-in little leg that comes just over here. It's actually all magnetic so it's not going to come out on itself so Pull that right up to the bottom, lower it down until that little leg touches the material, secure the bolt, lift that up and we're ready to go. Now before we actually continue I just want to thank um, Longer themselves for sponsoring today's video and providing the Longer B1 20 watt module a laser for testing and reviewing and some project work in the future. So Longer, thank you very much for being a partner uh, to my channel. Right, the laser has finished so let's check out the results. Now remember, this is four millimeter thick plywood, okay? So usually you would do this test with three millimeters. However, with a 20 watt module, I think four millimeters is far better. Let's see if I can, yeah, that one came out. Another one. That's popping out a little bit with some uh, pieces of the plywood. That's staying, that's not budging. Okay, so let's have a look at the back. As you can see, I've got a little bit overburn here, just slightly because the amount of power this module has. But look at that, four millimeter plywood. We managed to get to 400 millimeters per minute and 90% power. This is really powerful uh, laser head here, guys. And the test is just proving that. Right, let's have a look at the engraving test. Now I am starting at 2000 millimeters per minute due to the power of the machine. And as you can see, the fire alarm went off. So with the settings of 100% power and 2000 millimeters per minute, it was just too powerful for this test. Okay, so I'm gonna reset everything and we'll continue the test as you can see. So yeah, it is definitely a very powerful module. Now, as you've seen straight away with doing the engraving test, we actually done a test of one of the most crucial safety features of this machine, which was the flame detection, okay? With 2000 millimeters per minute, 100% power, it was just way, way too powerful um, for this test. And the fire alarm came to be stopped uh, engraving. So fantastic feature to have on a machine like that when you're thinking about your safety but this machine has got more safety options which i'm going to talk about in just a few moments but let's have a look at the engraving test look at that so as i said way too powerful like 80 percent power 2000 millimeters per minute that is super deep okay you can actually see a dot it nearly started to go through so very very powerful laser here with 30,000 millimeters per minute and this laser can go up to 36,000 millimeters per minute. Look at that, 100% power, 80% power, 60% power, still fantastic results at this type of speed. Absolutely brilliant. Well, you can see clearly that with the higher 
um, millimeters per minute it really gives fantastic results even at lower power settings so you can do your engraving much much faster with fantastic quality now let's run the cutting test in six millimeter plywood and let's have a look what are the results right then let's check out the results shall we this is six millimeter plywood sheet and that's not bad that's coming out that's coming out hardly but it's coming out six millimeters <laughs> and there you go it managed to cut six millimeter plywood at 300 millimeters per minute 100 percent power okay with 200 millimeters uh, per minute and 100 millimeters per minute no issues at all now that's not too bad however let's test out something a little bit thicker i've got two pieces of pine 16 millimeter and 20 millimeters let's have a look how many passes it will take to cut these through so let's talk about those safety features shall we as this machine is absolutely packed with them for example a security lock protection emergency stop button and a reset button that's just the basics as you've seen already in action, fantastic flame protection. Next, a data disconnection and laser head freezing for 15 seconds. When problems happen, the laser head is automatically reset to zero to avoid any burnout or when flame happens. Protection against machine movement when you accidentally knock it over. Plus, the panoramic filter glass that's on the module can filter about 99.8% of the laser light for increased safety. So, as you can see, from safety perspective, this machine is definitely leader in the market. Only three passes for 16 millimeter pine board. Absolutely incredible performance. Look at that. Beautiful, clean cut, hardly any overburn, just slightly over here, not much at all. Well, look at that, 16 millimeter pine board, three passes. Now it's time for the 20 millimeter pine board. Let's have a look how many passes the laser will need to cut through this. One thing I want to mention is that this laser machine offers a larger working area compared to the competitors. So in this case, we are getting 450 millimeters by 440 millimeters for those bit bigger projects. This machine also provides a very high speed of working up to 36,000 millimeters per minute, but we will test that in just few moments. In this model, you also do get the limit switches, which really helps when you're homing uh, the machine. And thanks to light burn support, it's all done automatically. Now this laser also comes with Wi-Fi connectivity. So with an application uh, that is suitable for this machine, you can control it via your phone, for example, or a tablet. Absolutely insane. Four passes, 20 millimeter pine board, only four passes. I think this is the best result in all my uh, testing of a laser engravers and cutters so far. 20 millimeter board, four passes, not much burning at all. Look at that, nice, clean, crisp cut. Four passes, <laughs> that's amazing performance. Next on the agenda, black acrylic sheet, three millimeters in thickness. Let's see if we can cut through that. And check that out, two passes, nice, clean, crisp cut, absolutely perfect with two passes, 100% power, 100 millimeters per minute. Now let's do some engraving tests. This is a metal sheet and we'll see what type of quality engravement we can get on metal. Right then, check it out. I have to say, <laughs> I wasn't expecting this. This is two millimeter um, steel sheet and it actually, due to the heat, it bent the sheet. 
So it just shows how powerful this laser is. And for this, I use settings 300 millimeters per minute, 100% power. And just look at that, it looks absolutely stunning. Super dark, fantastic quality, really nice and sharp. So happy with the results here, guys. It looks phenomenal. Next, it's time for my ceramic tile test. I've done Ata P10, Falcon 2. So now it's time for the longer B120 watt module. Check it out. I think the test on the tile came absolutely fantastic. 300 millimeters per minute, 100% power, super deep engraving, um, a little bit better than the Falcon, I think. Very good detail. Really happy with the results here, guys. Now, I've mentioned the speed of this machine. It can go up to 36,000 millimeters per minute. Well, let's try to engrave something at 36,000 millimeters per minute. And check that out. 36,000 millimeters per minute and absolutely perfect performance. Really nice, accurate and sharp engravement here, guys. Quite deep to the touch as well. Now, let's engrave a photo to see what we can actually achieve. And check it out. Obviously, I've used a photo of myself, but I think we can establish that the quality here is absolutely fantastic. 12,000 millimeters per minute, 90% power, and look at that quality. Check out the eyes, check out the glasses. The detail here is absolutely fantastic and the quality of this engraving is great. And there you go guys, longer B1 20 watt module. Easy to put together, it's probably gonna take you about 20 minutes, everything fits nicely. Quality of the materials is absolutely fantastic. The best features are definitely the safety features, there's plenty of them to keep your workshops safe and that's super important when working with lasers as you know they can cause fire and having all those security measures here are definitely worth it however guys it's not all pink and fluffy there's virtually two things that really annoy me with this machine first of all positioning of these two wires I do feel that they are a little bit in the way. I will probably like them to be on the side. The second thing is the um, screw, the knob itself that releases the module, okay? It's really short and it's really tiny. I've got large sausage fingers and it's quite difficult for me to actually undo it. However, straight away on a good thing, I really did like uh, the focal point setting uh, for the little retractable leg over here that's absolutely fantastic and it worked great so far these are the tests i've done that's my thoughts on it very capable machine and reasonable price tag especially when you consider the 20 watt module here however there will be more testing coming to my channel i.e some project videos using this bad boy so if you're not a subscriber make sure to subscribe to my channel to see that video in the near future now if you're interested in other videos around workshop projects anything like that i've got some really cool players for you guys just over here so you can go ahead click on those and maybe you'll find a video that will pique your interest i do have a lot of videos about lasers so hopefully I'll see you on those videos there. Take care.